Thank you very much, uh, Vesna. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, thank to the organizers uh, of the conference uh, for huge effort uh, uh, they uh, had made uh, uh, that this conference can take place uh, in this uh, online forum. So uh, we uh, participants from uh, other states than uh, Slovenia uh, can uh, can uh, participate uh, at the conference. Uh, but, <laughs> however, uh, I would uh, prefer to uh, be in Porto Roche uh, and in Piran because uh, these are beautiful uh, cities uh, with the sea uh, to run a little bit uh, in the morning or in the evening uh, by the sea. But there's this, uh, this uh, situation with COVID, so uh, thank you uh, again. And let's move uh, to my presentation. Uh, the topic uh, of my presentation uh, is uh, uh, the personal boundaries of uh, legally uh, binding uh, judgment and uh, and uh, uh, I try to uh, perceive the topic uh, in a broader uh, context and uh, I related it uh, not only to uh, the judgments but also uh, to the proceedings uh, uh, for which the judgment uh, is uh, uh, the desired goal. So uh, I will I will talk a little bit uh, uh, broader than than uh, the topic was probably uh, uh, meant to be. So uh, what's the judgment? Uh, uh, we have heard uh, a beautiful uh, speech uh, about uh, the character of judgment uh, uh, in uh, Brussels one regulation. In general, uh, the judgments uh, for, and then I will talk about judgments for uh, performance, uh, are something like an order uh, of the court uh, to fulfill a certain obligation by one party towards uh, another one. Uh, and therefore, uh, the judgments uh, are uh, connected closely, of course, with uh, substantive law and substantive law claims. Uh, the reason uh, of the existence of uh, procedural law and, ju and judgments also uh, is to uh, ensure the possibility of uh, authoritative uh, enforcement or exercise of subjective substantive rights. And therefore, uh, some ch any changes uh, in the uh, subject uh, of uh, substantive law claim also uh, have impact amount uh, to uh, procedural changes uh, uh, in the proceedings uh, and uh, possibly in in uh, the decision, especially uh, for uh, the active uh, legitimacy or uh, for the question of enforcement uh, of the obligation set out uh, uh, in uh, the judgment, in uh, the decision. These substantive changes uh, might be both universal succession, or succession uh, as it is, and uh, singular succession, I will talk about it, uh, or I will call it uh, assignment of a claim. And uh, there might be uh, different uh, opinions, uh, uh, what are the procedural consequences of these two types uh, of uh, succession? Um, again, in general, because I don't want to talk uh, especially about Czech law, uh, I don't want to talk about national laws and compare them. Uh, I want to uh, give you like a broader uh, and uh, more general uh, idea. Uh, Usually, uh, the, uh, the procedure, procedural consequences of uh, universal succession, or succession itself, uh, is also the procedural succession, uh, both during the proceedings as well uh, as uh, for already issued uh, court decision. Uh, it might be, or this is the result, this, these are the consequences, uh, if the nature uh, of uh, proceedings or the decision uh, allows it, uh, allows uh, the succession. Uh, so uh, it means that uh, that uh, the duty uh, arising out of the decision must not be linked uh, to a specific person. Uh, and uh, this is the Czech perspective. Uh, in Czech Republic, uh, uh, courts uh, takes, uh, take uh, account uh, uh, to universal succession uh, uh, for and uh, its consequences uh, 
uh, for proceedings uh, uh, ex officio. Uh, uh, a little bit uh, more difficult uh, situation uh, was connected uh, uh, in Czech Republic uh, with uh, uh, singular succession. Uh, and there were like a two uh, main opinions. Uh, one uh, was similar to universal succession, which means that uh, procedural succession occurs automatically and uh, the parties uh, of proceedings uh, uh, doesn't have to do anything and court uh, has to uh, proceed uh, ex officio. And the uh, other uh, opinion uh, was built or is based uh, uh, on the idea that uh, there has to be done some certain procedural steps and these steps are needed in order uh, for singular succession uh, and its uh, its uh, uh, procedural uh, consequences and this is also uh, the result uh, which now is uh, a part uh, of uh, Czech uh, procedural law but uh, these were like a national national uh, ideas or national uh, uh, perspectives. What about private international law? Um, it is a little bit more complicated because uh, when we are talking uh, about uh, substantive changes, uh, these questions, these issues uh, are considered uh, to be a limits of the applicable law. Usually uh, there are separate conflict law rules to determine the applicable law for these substantive changes. And as we are talking uh, uh, about uh, EU law and uh, we are in the countries, uh, member states of European Union, uh, we are talking about articles 14 and 15 in Rome 1 regulation or article 19 uh, in Rome 2 regulation. On the other hand, uh, when we are talking about procedural changes, or about proceedings uh, in general. This is the question of uh, Lex Fori. Typically, national procedural law, but it is not that simple as uh, it looks. And I will present it uh, on uh, one uh, still living case, uh, which is now uh, in front of the Czech courts. But uh, have a short look uh, on uh, on the text uh, of uh, Rome 1 uh, regulation and uh, about regulation for uh, legal uh, regulation, legal rules uh, uh, for the singular succession. Uh, it's regulated in Article 14, as I said, and it has, uh, uh, the Article 14 has uh, two uh, subsections. Uh, the first one uh, regulates uh, the relationship uh, between a signer and a signee. So the old and uh, new creditor, and uh, it says that the relationship between these two uh, parties or these two subjects uh, is regulated by uh, this regulation, by a Rome 1 regulation. Uh, the only thing uh, this, uh, this uh, Article 14, uh, subsection 1 says is that uh, there is a new relationship between a signer and a signee. And uh, because there is a new relationship, legal relationship, uh, it has to, uh, there has to be a new law uh, applicable to this uh, uh, relationship. And you can use uh, either freedom of choice uh, in Article 3 of Rome 1 regulation or alternative criteria in uh, Article 4. But the truth is that, that this legal relationship uh, is beyond uh, uh, our interest because it's a completely new uh, relationship. And, uh, what about uh, the relationship between a signee and uh, so the new uh, creditor and uh, the debtor? Uh, here is a different situation. Uh, the debtor is protected by a Rome 1 regulation. And uh, it's said that uh, the law governing the, the assigned or subrogated claim shall be determined its uh, assignability, et cetera. And, uh, 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 so it means uh, that uh, this old or the former relationship uh, which already existed is still uh, regulated by the same law as uh, at the beginning. So uh, the position of the debtor uh, is uh, protected and uh, no new uh, obligations uh, can, um, can uh, arise uh, for him. Um, 
and uh, even more uh, explicit regulation uh, is or explicit wording uh, uh, is uh, in Article 15, which is a regulation uh, of legal subrogation. Uh, and uh, it says uh, almost the same things as, uh, as uh, in uh, Article 14, which means that uh, 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 the relationship between uh, the debtor and the new creditor uh, is still regulated by the same law. Uh, it seems to be pretty clear, but still in the practice uh, it can create a very nice uh, and uh, complex situations. So this is the case, and as I said, it's still uh, a living case uh, uh, solved uh, by the Czech court. Uh, there were, still there are two Czech companies. One of them uh, is a storekeeper, a huge company, and the another one, the second one, uh, is a manufacturer and is doing uh, like rack systems. So the storekeeper bought a rack system from this manufacturer and put uh, to this wrecking system uh, goods uh, owned by a German company. And uh, the wrecking system collapsed and the goods uh, were damaged. And, uh, and uh, a lot of goods were damaged, so uh, the damages are pretty high. Uh, the Czech uh, storekeeper uh, is uh, insured for the liability for damage with a British insurance company. And this insurance contract uh, is governed by an English law. So the British insurance company compensated the German one for the damages. But considering that the damage was caused uh, by uh, the problems, by the defect uh, of the wrecking system, uh, they assumed that uh, uh, a recourse uh, would arise for the damages against the, the Czech manufacturer of this wrecking system. And the thing is that uh, under English law, uh, there is no statutory recourse uh, from the Czech storekeeper to the British uh, insurance company for the damages. So it means that uh, according to British law, uh, according to the law of applicable to the insurance contract, the Czech storekeeper is obliged uh, to enforce the claim and uh, when he gets the money from the Czech uh, manufacturer, he has to transfer this money uh, to the British uh, insurance company. So the Czech storekeeper initiated legal proceedings in the Czech Republic against uh, another one, the second one, Czech, uh, Czech uh, company uh, in the Czech Republic, initiated uh, the legal proceedings in the Czech Republic. Uh, and uh, uh, the defendant, the Czech uh, rec system manufacturer, raises uh, the defense uh, of the fact that uh, according to the Czech law, uh, as the law applicable to the contract of work, there, there is statutory subrogation of the recourse of the claim for damages to the insurance company. So he claims that uh, not the Czech storekeeper, but, uh, the, uh, but uh, uh, the British insurance company should initiate proceedings uh, against him. So uh, in the, these proceedings uh, uh, initiated by the Czech storekeeper, uh, the Czech uh, rec system manufacturer objects that uh, the Czech storekeeper uh, is in lack of, uh, sorry, is in lack of uh, substantive standing uh, to bring proceedings uh, to the court. Uh, and uh, the court doesn't know uh, what to do. And there are several questions uh, uh, we can, we can uh, ask. Uh, was there an international element uh, in uh, uh, the contractual relationship uh, for work uh, between two Czech companies? No, there was not. Was one Czech company uh, ordered a uh, rec system from another Czech company? It was delivered uh, in the Czech Republic. It was paid uh, by Czech crowns uh, from one uh, bank account in the Czech Republic to another bank account in the Czech Republic. So there is no uh, cross-border element uh, in this, uh, in this um, uh, uh, contract, uh, contractual relationship. Uh, but, however, uh, second question, does the existence of insurance contract uh, governed by English law, uh, does it affect substantive standing to bring proceedings to recourse claim for damages? 
And the, here the answer has to be yes. Uh, I will uh, get back uh, to this uh, to this uh, questions uh, on uh, another slide. And uh, another question: uh, Does the existence of insurance contract governed by English law affect uh, the applicable law of the contract uh, for work? Thus, uh, the content uh, of obligation rights and obligation for recourse of the claim for damages. Uh, uh, for which uh, proceedings are to be concluded, uh, uh, conducted, sorry, conducted, uh, and a decision uh, issued. And uh, again, according uh, to uh, Rome 1 regulation, as I showed you, the answer has to be no. Uh, so what is the solution uh, to this, uh, to this uh, uh, issue? Uh, and uh, what, uh, what uh, the Czech uh, court uh, uh, should do? Uh, Applicable law uh, for contractual relationship between British insurance company and Czech uh, storekeeper determines whether uh, their legal subrogation occurs and uh, uh, the small letters uh, in italic uh, are the part uh, of uh, Rome 1 uh, regulation, which uh, of uh, Article 15 in the Rome 1 uh, regulation, which uh, governs this, uh, this uh, uh, question. And it shows you that uh, the law which governs the Fed person's duty, the British insurance company duty to satisfy the creditor shall determine whether, whether and uh, to what extent the third person, the insurance company, is entitled to exercise uh, uh, against the debtor, the Czech manufacturer of the REC system, the rights which the creditor had against the debtor. Uh, whether the British company is entitled to exercise uh, uh, the rights. So, and the answer, according to British law, also can be and is no, the British company is not entitled uh, to exercise these rights. The substantive claim uh, on damages remains uh, unchanged. And it is not affected uh, by English law. This is the thing. Uh, uh, that uh, the Czech uh, court uh, is uh, uh, worried uh, uh, above all because uh, uh, the advocate uh, of uh, the defendant tries to push uh, the Czech, uh, Czech uh, judge uh, to, uh, to the idea that uh, if he uh, accepts uh, uh, the uh, the idea uh, that uh, that uh, uh, he has to he has to uh, uh, take into account the British law. He will also have to apply the British law on the claim for damages, which is not true according to according to uh, Rome One regulation. Um, well, I think that uh, I had there uh, one more uh, case law of European Court of Justice, but but uh, as I see Vesna. Uh, I am out of time, so I will finish at uh, this moment and uh, thank you uh, very much.